So it's 1232. So I've given a two minute buffer and I'm going to keep uh, letting people in as they arrive, but I want to get started in the interest of respecting everyone's time. Good afternoon. My name is Heather Harris and I am the Educational Programs Manager at the Art Museum of West Virginia University. And I'm very happy that all of you could join us here today for our Lunchtime Looks uh, virtual edition. So for those of you who frequent our Lunchtime Looks program, you know that we ask people to gather together and kind of converse and eat lunch. And then we have a guest speaker in our galleries talk about one of the works of art uh, or a few works of art on display in the gallery. Well, we obviously can't join and eat lunch together today, but one of the um, small advantages of being socially distant is that we can actually invite speakers from further afield. So that's what we've done here today, and we're really excited for today's speaker, um, Bud Shark from Sharks Inc. Prints. Um, and I'm going to let my colleague Robert Bridges tell you a little bit more about him. But before I do, just a few little technical um, notes. The first being that, um, like in our previous programs, we have you all muted, um, not because we don't want to hear from you, but we don't want to hear the ambient noise from your homes as our, uh, as our speaker is speaking. Um, so we, but we do encourage participation and questions. And so the format we're going to use for that is the chat button that should be along the bottom of um, your Zoom screen. I know some people on mobile devices such as iPads find it along the top, but it's a little speech bubble. And I'm going to be monitoring that throughout today's discussion. But it's generously said that he's willing to take um, questions kind of as he goes. So um, if something's relevant to a particular slide or artist that he's talking about, I will throw that question at the time. So feel free and then we'll have some time afterwards for questions as well. Um, you're also more than welcome to turn on your video so we can all see each other or turn off your video if you uh, prefer not to share the insides of your homes. Um, anything is fine, but like I said, we encourage participation, we encourage chat, and uh, we would um, really like to hear from you as uh, you hear from our very special speaker here today. So like I said, I'm going to now turn over to our curator, Robert Bridges, who's going to give a more formal introduction of Bud and let you know a little bit more about today's program. Okay, thanks and enjoy. Great. Thanks, Heather, and welcome everybody. Good afternoon. Uh, good morning, Bud. Um, today's speaker, uh, Bud Shark, is the founder and master printer of Sharks, Inc., as you can see here. Um, it is in Lyons, Colorado. Sharks Inc. has been publishing prints for 43 years and have collaborated with a distinguished group of more than 160 artists from the United States and Europe. Many of the collaborations are so successful that many artists return year after year to collaborate with Bud. The prints produced are innovative and exciting, allowing artists uh, work not only to be recreated in the print form, but also these print adds to the ongoing dialogue by each artist. Processes used in the studio have included lithography, monotype, oil pastels, uh, using oil pastels and watercolors, other materials, metal leaf, chincolet, embossing with collage, as well as innumerable, innumerable innovations uh, for cutting and printing wood block prints, and Bud will show you a few of these today. Other relief prints, and the engineering and construction of three-dimensional three lithographs uh, that they devise methods and materials for realizing, and Bud's going to be able to show a few of those projects as well today. The Art Museum of WVU owns seven prints by four different artists from uh, his studio. Bud received his BS from University of Wisconsin-Madison and an MA from the University of New Mexico in Albuquerque. So to start off, uh, uh, we're going to give the screen over to Bud so he can do his PowerPoint. And like Heather said, um, we can, uh, she will moderate some questions as well as I will have a few questions along the way, um, Bud. But, uh, 
you want to go ahead and uh, tell us a little bit about uh, uh, your uh, print shop there and also some of the collaboration projects you've worked on in the past. Great. I'm uh, very happy to be here and uh, thank you for coming and uh, listening and watching. Uh, on the screen is my uh, motto that I picked up uh, when I was still a student at, at the university. Ars longa vita brevis est is art is forever and life is brief. And uh, it's tattooed on my arm too. So let's go on and we'll, um, I, uh, I have been, have my own studio for 40, now 44 years. Uh, prior to uh, setting up my own press, I worked in, uh, in London for four years at Editions Electo and Petersburg Press and taught at the Slade School of, of, of Fine Art in the printmaking department. Um, well, my time in, in uh, London, I worked with a very interesting group of artists, uh, including uh, David Hockney, uh, James Rosenquist, uh, Henry Moore, uh, Bernard Cohen, and, and others. And uh, it was a, a great time in, in London, but uh, we had a, a, a daughter born and uh, we, were, we were wanting to be back in Colorado with our families and uh, settled in Boulder, Colorado without knowing what we were going to do. And um, after working as a sign painter and doing some construction, I thought that I might be able to set up my own press in, in Boulder. And in 1976, we I did start my press and uh, operated as a contract press, which, which means it's it, the, we do the printing and the, the prints are, the printing is paid for and the artists or their galleries or uh, distribute those prints. And slowly in the first few years, I, I started inviting artists that I was interested in working with and we uh, printed those prints and, and published them. Uh, and it, it expanded to, to where we were no longer doing contract print and I was inviting artists that I was interested in working with. Working with. This is a view of uh, the part of the studio. Um, the, fir the first studio I had was in Boulder uh, and I had two or three different locations and uh, 22 years ago we moved to, to this studio and built this studio in outside Alliance, Colorado. We're on a, a piece of land of uh, 36 acres and we have our home and Barbara, and my wife is an artist and she has a studio. So it's all in one, one place. Um, I'm going to talk now about Rodney Carswell, who who's, was a student with us when we were in school in the University of New Mexico and he came to the University of Colorado for graduate work and uh, he's been a, a long-term friend and uh, we did a print with him several years ago and uh, more like 20 years ago and finally invited him back and uh, did work on, on two lithographs. This is a, a print that uh, has 17, 17 different colors uh, printed uh, and uh, also uh, some collage on it. The, the paper that looks like wood grain is a, was a collage found paper that was 
glued on after the printing was done. The, uh, this is the, these are images from our archive. Our, our archive has been uh, uh, acquired by the Colorado University Art Museum. And uh, it, it's a collection of over 3,000 pieces, uh, including finished prints and then mylars like this, which are, are material that was used to make the prints. And uh, we're really pleased to have the so you have this collection and there will be a, a a large exhibition it was originally scheduled for 2021 but doing due to the virus etc it's been moved up to 2022 so uh, these are each of these uh, mylars were printed in three different colors and so uh, it could roll across uh, the top with one color, the middle with another color, and the, the bottom with a third color. Uh, the, the mylar is, is a transparent plastic sheet and the imagery is painted on the mylar, in this case with a black acrylic paint, which is uh, opaque. And the mylar is laid on, the, on a, a light, photosensitive lithographic plate and exposed to light and developed and the image area which is was the black part is then accepts ink and you can you can roll ink on those three different sections they get smaller as we get down uh, these little nicks it look like nicks in the in the bands there um, when the mylars have been used, we do what we call cancel them when they, we cut out a piece of it so to guarantee that no further uh, prints can be made from these mylars. Uh, the uh, Rodney's work is, is exceptional, and particularly with his very fine line draw, drawings and the the line work that you see here is is drawn by hand without use of a ruler and uh, it's a very effective imagery um, this was a is a, a mylar also but just made with cut paper and in those three uh, cartoon balloons are were uh, printed in different colors also. Um, this is the, th at the same time we did that, that print, we also did this one called, uh, actually it's, it, the titles are very unusual, Geo 2 This one has uh, cutouts on it, and you can see this is a, the completed print. This this print has uh, about 40, 43 different colors printed on this print. This is a close up. There are some areas where we knew we would be cutting out holes, and uh, you can see those little open spaces. They were. Uh, expected to be cut out. Uh, this is me in the studio mixing up some ink for the project. Um, these are uh, the mixed up various colors of ink, numbered, etc., cetera, uh, set out on the press. Uh, this is the first plate and first color for, for that particular print and it, it was made with uh, Xerox toner in a wash and give a texture to it and we printed this particular mylar 
in white ink so that when we printed the colored inks over it, they wouldn't just be flat, but there'd be some modulation in those triangles. This is our map for uh, the various colors on all the prints. And uh, these are the mylars for all those colored shapes. And uh, in this, in these, situation there would be places where we could ink two or three different colors with brayers to uh to get as many colors as we could on at one in one point without having them so close that we couldn't print them so there were there were eight or nine of these these mylars with the different colors Anybody have any questions? So one comment just that everyone should know is that both of these Carswell prints that Bud's featured so far are currently um, on display, although unfortunately we can't see them, but they're in our exhibition, Brilliant, um, the recent acquisitions exhibition that's in our, um, uh, our McGee Gallery right now. And um, that's one of the reasons that we were excited to have Bud speak. And if you see them in person, really, um, especially the detail of those hand-drawn lines and then the way the cutouts um, in the piece we just saw give dimensionality is really um, impressive and exciting to see. So I hope that some of you have had a chance to see those in person, but also seeing how these um, pieces work together. Um, does anyone does anyone have any questions about the process? Um, might take you a second to type, so I'll let Bud go on. But feel free if you um, want to know anything else about how these prints were made. Just um, post it up there, and we'll get the, your question to Bud. And and Bud, also you can um, maybe explain. Uh, it may help for the people who are really a um, novice with with printmaking um, that each one of these uh, group uh, pieces that that uh, is a run a uh, press run yeah. so you're each time you're you're producing one of the plates and coloring it regardless of the colors you have on there that's one run through the press that's right so for a print like this one how many uh, times through the press, would you say? It's 43 colors? Yeah, 43 colors and there were 12 plates. And um, I actually have a, a question now from, um, from Martin. He wants to know if you invented any colors for this process. So he has invent in quotation, but kind of how you make those, those how do you mix those colors up and make them? Yeah, the, the colors are, we have a, a range of of inks that we we have sort of in the studio, but we can then mix those inks to make the colors that we want. And Rodney was the one who mixed the colors that we want for those all the triangles that were in. The, in the um, Great, thank you. Yeah, the, 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 and um, just to let you know that we do, we do an addition of 25 numbered impressions and uh, six artist proofs and the artists get to keep those proofs and we, we uh, distribute and, and sell, sell the prints. Um, there are also printers proofs and workshop proofs and uh, there is an archive impression, which is one that goes to the CU Sharkive collection. Uh, and they have one of virtually everything we've done in the collection. This is a more recent print of Rodney's. Uh, and, an, and another one, and in this case, well, we, uh, you, you can see the, the 
drawn lines that he's done on these by hand on mylar and then transferred to the plate. But there, he does them without any uh, tools, no, no rulers, no, it's all drawn by hand and it's quite amazing to watch him work and see this happen. Um, the colored triangles in this one were done similar to the previous one where we printed a white uh, texture underneath to modify the colors so they're not just dead flat. and dozens of them to, to be able to, to do those. Oh, sorry, my computer's unstable. Uh, th this is another map for the, the one we just looked at and you can, you can see where the colors are plotted out so they don't know to match and, and connect to each other. This is uh, me print, rolling up a plate on the on the press, and you can you can see that the the plate has a very thin film of water on it, and the ink on the roller is oil based, and the ink sticks to the image on the plate and is is repelled by the water, uh, so it only sticks to where where the images are, and each. Each time we have to ink the plate probably two or three times with the roller, then lay a piece of paper on it, run it through the press, and that's one color on one piece of paper. And um, we have to do that obviously multiple times. So uh, this is a, a group of prints that were, were done in the last year or so. Um, so, Bud, before you move on to other artists, I had a non sequitur question that I wanted to jump in okay. there um, as we kind of transition from talking about Rodney, who's in our exhibition, to now Bud's going to show us several different artists he's worked with. But one artist that um, my colleague Michael Loop knows that you've worked with is Ed Hardy. And he wanted to know if you were lucky enough to have him do the tattoo of your logo on your arm. Yes. I've got two of Don Ed Hardy's uh, tattoos on my arm. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so, so that's important information for everyone, but I, I think that that is, uh, for those those in the know in the tattoo world, that's exciting, exciting news. Um, so I'll let, I'll let you continue on to talk about the prints now. <laughs> yeah, and I've, I've done a lot of work with, with Hardy and he's just terrific to work with. Uh, Enrique Chigoya lives in the Bay Area and teaches at Stanford and we've done 26 different lithographs uh, over 22 years. This, uh, this and uh, all of the prints that we do with Enrique, uh, we do on a paper that's handmade in Mexico called Amate and it's it's handmade and pounded from the bark of the mulberry and fig trees. And the, the paper that we get from them is actually four by eight foot sheets and they're pounded out on a board in, out in the open air and they, they have um, metal blocks that they, they pound the fibers of the, of the of the, and it pounds out into paper and then it dries in the sun and uh, we have someone in Mexico City who goes to the market and meets the man who from the the vi village where they make this paper and this is the same paper and the same family it goes all the way back to the Mayan era uh, still done today and we get this paper shipped. We have to, in order to 
it's it's a little bit rough and uneven. And so for us to print on it, we have to run it through the press about six times, three times uh, with a little water and three times dry to smooth out the paper so that we can get good printing on it. And um, we, we've used that on all the one of uh, Enrique Chico's prints. This is a, a print by Amy Ellingson, who was from the Bay Area and now lives in Santa Fe. And this is uh, her first lithograph. And uh, had, this has about 12 or 14 different colors on it. And um, the images were made uh, digitally and then tr transferred uh, onto the plate and in each of the colors that were used. Um, there's also a, a slight wood grain that you can see in the cream cream or gray color in the background. And we had to make a plate that uh, was that painted out all the what is the white line so that when we exposed the wood grain on it, we could then uh, expose the um, the plate and burn out where we didn't want the grain and and ex expose the paper. This is a mate to the to the pair called variation. This is a print by uh, Ana Maria Hernando, who uh, is from Argentina originally and lived in Colorado for a, a while. And um, uh, I've worked with her for several years. And the, the, this print from recent, from the last year, um, this has uh, the silver dots that you see uh, within this flower uh, is, is inked in uh, clear ink and then dusted with uh, pearlescent powder and the pearlescent powder sticks only to where the ink is and brushes off the rest. And we see some variation like in the center and uh, outside the edge where the, the those dots change color as you move and, and the light uh, shows up on this paper. Uh, this one also has a pearlescent powder in the, in the flower and a silver ink in, on the background and with the black ink on top of that. Um, if you look, if you can see closely, there, there are layers of ink where you see through the layer of ink to see some of the other layers. And uh, it, it's something we can do. We can make the ink very transparent or very opaque. And in this case, we've used a lot of somewhat transparent ink and colors to, to build the image. This is a print by Yvonne Jaquette who's an artist that we've worked with from way back in like 1982 and um, lives in New York and spends time in Maine in the summer. And this is a, a view of the river at Belfast, Maine. And this has, uh, this is done a little differently than some of the other lithographs I've just showed you, um, where most of this was done with a uh, pencil drawn on a, a slightly frosted, uh, you can get various textures and pencil-like marks and tonalities where you, you can have a shaded area that goes behind or on top of another shaded area.
This is a, a lithograph by Claire Sherman, who's an artist that we first worked with uh, two years ago. Um, and uh, her one of her first lithographs, uh, she works, um, she does a lot of traveling and uh, goes into forests and trees and uh, there's, there's water behind this tree and it's a little big and um, uh, she was a new artist to us. I'd not been aware of her work and we, we were visiting uh, the DC Moore Gallery in New York and we were there for a print fair and ran into one of the directors and we were talking and he said, oh, we, we have some who was interested in making some prints and I said well I'd be interested in seeing the work and so he brought out a lot of her work and we were really impressed with the work and I was um, really interested in in translating her paintings into lithographs and she came in the summer of 2018 and did this this print um, and came back at, uh, last year and did uh, two more prints. This is a smaller piece uh, that was printed on a Thai mulberry paper and then collaged onto the white paper. And I don't know if you can see there's a there's a white border that goes around this small uh, waterfall. This has about 10 or 12 colors on it. This is by Fred Stonehouse, who, who lives in Milwaukee and teaches printmaking at uh, University of Wisconsin in, in Madison, which is where I first learned uh, lithography. This is a print by Barbara Taganaka, who uh, uh, studied uh, in Boulder and known known her since we first moved to Colorado. And uh, um, she eventually moved to New York and, she, and now shows at DC Moore Gallery, uh, the same gallery where. Uh, Claire Sherman shows and she does huge paintings and small paintings and we've done many lithographs with her and uh, this is the most recent one and this is another one where we've used uh, some pearlescent powder on wet ink to to get a, a, a sheen and a, a kind of a little bit of glitter on it it doesn't show up so well in this. This is a, a print by Betty Woodman, who's an artist that I've worked with for probably 30 years. And um, she passed away two years ago. And this was her, her, her the last piece that she had been working on um, and had passed away before it was fully completed. Uh, and uh, the, the family and the estate decided that we should go ahead and, and print it and have it a state stamp. Um, and uh, it's been a popular print. And uh, this, this is primarily a woodcut. Uh, there are some other papers collaged uh, in the center image image where you see the vases on the table there's a so it looks like slightly splattered uh, piece that's a piece of found paper that we uh, imported from china uh, the pieces on the left hand side were printed on a on a lithographic paper a reeves bfk and cut out and collaged onto the other 
of the sheet and the, the backgrounds, uh, the rest of the backgrounds are all printed from hand carved wood. And in this case, mostly um, mahogany and oak. This is a lithograph. No, I'm sorry. This is a large woodcut by John Buck, who's another artist that we've worked with over many years. Uh, we've probably done maybe 60 different woodcuts. This, this one is large. It, it's printed on Thai mulberry paper. Um, the, we print a background color first, and you, which you can see uh, through the, uh, the and John's John's work is very unusual for a woodcut because most of it isn't actually cut. All the drawing that you see in the background, all those figures and the the yellow or gold lines, are literally incised into the block with a ballpoint pen or a nail. They're not really carved in like a traditional woodcut. Um, the, we printed a, printed a color first underneath and then they, which is the sort of yellow and the, then the greens over it as a second layer. The cat had several different blocks um, and we we did some gradations you can see in the in the coloring of the the cat and um, the border is sort of hold when John makes it the border actually holds the pieces of wood into place initially and then if you look carefully you can see there's little nail holes where the, the nails to hold the blocks in place uh, show up. These, these we do in relatively small editions because they're incredibly labor intensive. Uh, the printing on the key block has to be hand burnished uh, with, with the wooden knobs that we make to, to transfer the ink onto the paper. And uh, it's really laborious and takes a lot of time, but the the outcome is pretty amazing, and um, John's work is always interesting to work work on. This is Red Grooms, an artist that we've also done a lot of work with, and this is him working in our studio uh, with a building a paper sculpture that's a study for a three-dimensional print that we are making. So he, he cuts and folds and paints the paper and glues it together. And once we get what we want, we have to take it apart and lay it out flat and figure out how we can build it. This is the, uh, the printed piece when it's completed and put together. These are the sheets of all the parts for the for that um, tugboat, including uh, seagulls and uh, all kinds of things. This this piece that looks like a, a shoe is one of the decks of one of the layers of the of the tugboat. And this is a, another sheet that has all the water, which you can see all these little zigzags and tabs, and they have to be cut and scored and folded and glued together. And uh, it's a, a job that my assistant Roseanne does most of the work on uh, cutting and gluing and assembling them. Uh, this is Red working on the, one of the mylars for that 
that blue plate to the water. This is Jane Hammond, uh, lives in New York, and uh, we've done a few prints with her. The, all of the, her projects have been very ambitious, and this one is a close to life size uh, mummy. Uh, and she, we figured out how to form the shape of the of the of the figure and uh, of the mummy and uh, uh, Jane is laying out images that are going to be laid on top of the and then transferred to a plate and printed this is the finished piece which is uh, covered with gold leaf, uh, both real gold leaf and synthetic gold leaf. And uh, we had some of the paper silk screened with gold color on it before we even started applying the real gold leaf. Uh, we used several different kinds of gold leaf uh, that, uh, that have different colorations. Some are more golden and some are more uh, silvery. This, these are all cut out and hand, hand glued together. This is one of the sheets with the parts and the printing. All the tabs for cutting and assembling. In the Uh, Jane's always used a lot of uh, uh, found uh, sort of graphic images um, and in this case has used uh, a lot of imagery about Egypt, etc. But there are also things like butterflies and there's her portrait is in there and eyes and turtles and all kinds of other things make it interesting. Uh, on the left side, uh, we, she uh, Xeroxed uh, hundreds of feathers and then cut them out and laid them out on the, on the front end. And uh, we, laid in different colors on all of all the different uh, feathers. It's we we used her face for the face on the mummy. This is a, a three part lithograph by Robert Kushner uh, from a couple years ago. Uh, uh, color lithograph with uh, his amazing kind of brushwork and then the, the coloring and the, all the various textures. So several of these have multiple layers of some colors behind and uh, on top of each other and then there are areas where there, there's more or less pure color. There's uh, a band of gold leaf that goes across the about the middle of this, and it's it's a large uh, print, uh, thirty-seven by seventy-five, and this is a, a print by Hong Liu, who's an artist from originally from China and came to the U.S. and uh, lived in the Bay Area and uh, taught at Mills College and uh, this is a, a self-portrait. She did a, a series of three different portraits and this is uh, official portrait citizen. So this is her as a, now a U.S. citizen. Um, there are a lot of washes in, in her work where the 
the, the Xerox toner that we use is, is painted on very loosely and uh, but very effectively and uh, um, it, she's she's one of our favorite artists because she's got a great sense of humor also in the studio in the bottom left there so there it's called the official portraits and we actually found some of her her uh, documents and ID cards, et cetera, and Xerox some of those and put them on another piece of paper and collage those on. So this this is her citizen and her her uh, IDs. And that's the end of my talk. Uh, um, but I'm happy if anybody has any. But I'd like to um uh ask you a couple of questions one thing that i'm always fascinated with uh print shops like yourself contract uh printers um you have to the, you showed such a wide variety of artwork and and artists with different approaches how do you switch gears between artists and how do you um actually approach that as a new artist comes in um, well, it, it's one of the things that I like is that I do do a lot of different kinds of, of prints and, of, and just in terms of, the, of how, how the prints are made, but also from small prints to large prints and um, very colorful prints, colors been a really important uh, part of, of I, I think, our body of work. Um, it's something that I, I'm very interested in, and um, I think it's important. Uh, um, I'm, and, uh, just to clarify, I'm not a contract shop. I, it's all by invitation only, and we uh, we we jointly own the prints together, and so the the artist contributes their great skills and uh, in help making the print, and we do the printing, and uh, we when the prints are sold, we share the sales uh, jointly. Mm -hmm. So. It, it's, uh, there's a lot of a lot of invested time both for the artists and for us and the materials. Um, so I have a question from Karen Lubar, who's actually our museum's registrar, and she has a very registrarial type question. So she'd like to know if you have any preservation suggestions for prints with glitter or gold leaf. Um, well, uh, the, the gold leaf is pretty uh, um, durable, actually. Uh, uh, glitter, we've, we've used some, but not very much of it. But, uh, but the, uh, I guess you're asking about the pearlescent powders, which are bonded to the paper uh, due to the ink that they're dusted on. So um, I, it's, uh, I, it's, it's all pretty stable and as long as it's taken care of uh, safely, it, 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 it endures. Uh, we have, you know, we used a lot of different um, glues and et cetera to assemble all those three-dimensional pieces and those those are archival also and um so i had another question about it for me one of the things that's always fascinating about um printmaking is that collaboration between the print shop or the printmaker and the artist and so could you speak a little and you mentioned you know you have an assistant that helps you with cutting and things like that could you speak a little bit more about um the role of collaboration or how you see um 
what your approach is to collaborating with these artists with tremendously different styles and I'm sure different kind of uh, personalities and values as artists. Um, how, how do you uh, see collaboration playing in your work? Well, collaboration is all that I do. <laughs> um, and I enjoy it immensely. And uh, I like that there's a lot of variety in the kinds of work that we do and everybody has a quite a different approach. Uh, w one thing that's interesting is, uh, you know, like uh, some of the work that we did with Betty Woodman, a lot of the paper was found paper and she'd go to New York Central paper in New York and find these papers and come to Colorado with them and uh, want to include those in the, in the prints. Um, and, you know, it, it'll, it makes it possible to, to do very different things by using different papers and approaches, etc. And, you know, I, I guess I, I pick artists that I want to work with. And um, usually it's because it's, it's something, something a little different than what we do. And I like the challenge. And um, then also the, it, it's a situation where I've people worked with for 30 years or more and uh, those really long and fruitful and enjoyable collaborations are, are great. But I, uh, I also you know, keep adding someone new that I haven't worked with either before or, or not worked with for a period of time. Um, and sometimes uh, one artist will rec recommend an artist. It's like you, you should you should uh, talk about so check so and so and and his or her work and uh, and that's how uh, that's how I choose people sometimes just based on a recommendation from from another artist or a gallery. Great, thank you. Um, I'm not seeing any other questions in the chat box. Bob, did you have anything else you wanted to add? Sure, I, you know, but I've followed your work for um, quite a few years. Um, first um, uh, through a collection in Chicago and then later through art fairs. But um, always look forward to seeing uh, a new email come through with new projects you're doing. Um, but we're very pleased to have um, the seven prints uh, in our collection and, and four of those prints are up in, in our exhibition Brilliant right now. And the, the thing that I just respond so well to in, in these works are the, the um, depth and the layers that that go into it it's it's they're never flat there's always so much more to see in these prints when you see them in person unfortunately we're in a situation where we're not looking at them in person but I um, we have extended brilliant um, it's going to go into the fall semester so the museum will be open again and um, and hopefully everyone that's viewing this will be able to get in and, and get up close to those prints and, and see all of the color and the beauty of them. But thank you for uh, sharing your expertise with us. Yeah. Well, thank you for inviting me to come and speak with, to you and show, show what we do and uh, I've enjoyed it. Yeah. Good. So I would encourage everyone to, of course, as Bob said, come see Brilliant um, when we are able to reopen safely. Um, and of course, make sure that you're following us on our social media channels and our mailing list for more update, updated information about that. But also check out um, Bud's website where you can sort of spend a little more time on each of these objects, zoom in, sort of see some of what he's talking about in terms of that layering and all of that. Um, and uh, it's really a delight and we're very thankful to you, Bud. Um, 
for our uh, loyal lunchtime looks audience, we're actually going to have a back to back on Friday, next Friday, May 29th, we're going to do another lunchtime looks. Most of our online programming since the closure has focused on our um, in-house curated show, Brilliant. Um, but we're actually gonna return to um, the exhibition Modern Movement, figurative works by Arthur Bowen Davies, which is um, a traveling show from the Meyer Museum at Randolph College. And it, um, has many sketches by Arthur Davies and a lot are inspired by dancers and particularly modern dance. Um, our speaker next week is Dr. Mary Beth Mandich. Those of you who know me know that I'm very excited to have her as our speaker. And she um, is actually uh, one of the things that's great about this programming is that we can do um, very focused art process looks like we did today with Bud. But the other thing that we try and do is bring in an interdisciplinary uh, perspective. So Dr. Mandich is a physical therapist and she's going to be talking about movement within those sketches and drawings from a kind of medical functional movement um, and a clinical perspective and kind of uh, merging that with the dance uh, background, as well as the visual art that Davies brings to the exhibition. So look out early next week for a WUFU form to sign up for the link for that. Um, and we thank you all for coming today. Bud, did you have a final word you wanted to add in? I yes, I, I just wanted to say that um, you, our, there's a website for uh, our, the Sharkive, the CU collection called thesharchive.com and it it has all of the work and all of this all the related materials it's a it's a huge collection and it's really interesting to to look at great so, so yeah so not only um, shark things uh, website with their current prints but the sharkive as well so um thank you all for joining us and we will hopefully see you all next week. We hope you have a safe and healthy Memorial Day weekend and um, we look forward to hearing from you all again soon. Thanks everybody. Thank you, Bob. Thank you, Heather. Thank you, Bud. Thank you, Bud.